All right, guys, well, welcome back to Allegheny Scout Camps. Today we're doing part three. All right, so part three, we're going to cover the Allegheny Scout Camps patches, Eagle's Nest Reservation. We're going to skip over Marshall and throw that into part four. I had to change a few things and just didn't have time to finish it up tonight. Uh, we're going to cover some Camp Tynesta, uh, the Ranch, Hillman Reservation, Camps Semiconon, and Camp Little Con. So let's get started with uh, the Allegheny Scout Camp stuff. So Allegheny Scout Camps, 1943 to 67. So when we talk about these Allegheny Scout Camps, we're referring to uh, Camp Semiconon, Gaiasuda, Tyanesta, The Ranch, Hillman Reservation, as well as Eagle's Nest, Dean, Hubbard, a couple different ones. And the reason we have 43 uh, on here instead of the original start of the Allegheny uh, Council is because in 1943, Allegheny Council observe, absorbed the Allegheny West Council. And that's where we start seeing a lot of these current issues for the time, uh, Allegheny Scout Camps. So what you're looking at on the left of your screen, you're going to see an overview of the council's camping properties, uh, which comes directly out of a uh, short-term camping guide that was published in the 60s by the council. Uh, the one thing to note uh, on here is that Eagle's Nest Reservation is missing. That would be down on the map below Bridgeville, which is uh, between Marshall Reservation and Hillman Reservation. On the right side of your screen, you're going to see an arrowhead-shaped patch, uh, Allegheny Scout Camps BSA. Uh, this was the standard issue for quite a few years. Uh, the council had, a, there were a couple different versions, some rough twill, some smooth twill, light twill, whichever ones you want to call it. Uh, but there's honestly too many to count. They used the patch for well over 15 years. Uh, and with that patch, to distinguish which camp you went to, we have these little log segments. Uh, these segments uh, are a little tough to find. Uh, depends on which camp you're looking for. Uh, camp Semiconon and Tynesta were their resident camps. Uh, so they pop up a little bit more uh, frequent than the other ones. Gaiasuda is also very common as they did year round program there uh, from January 1st to December 31st, merit badges, all of it. The three hardest to get are the ranch and then W Virginia, which was for Hillman reservation. Uh, the ranch one was only used for about three years uh, before the ranch closed. So it's a pretty tough one to find. Uh, Camp staff is a very tough one. You think it would be a little bit more common because they used it for so long, but I've only ever seen three of them. So I'd say in this order of how rare they are, you have Semiconon, Gaiasuda, Tyanesta, The Ranch, Camp Staff, then West Virginia. And if anybody finds the West Virginia one, I'm looking. All right, so the Allegheny Scout Camps had quite a few generic trading post issues, neckerchiefs, uh, slides, uh, pennants. If you look at the top left of your screen, you see an Allegheny Scout Camp slide with a wood back. Uh, that's actually a pin affixed to a wooden neckerchief slide. There is a metal slide of that pin. Uh, the Allegheny Scout Camp's SPL, that's a kneel slide. They're not terribly rare, uh, but you see them pop up occasionally, but they're still a little tougher to find. Uh, the slide color is actually that like orangish you know, orangish yellow, that is the SPL writing. Now this one, somebody happened to paint it. Down on the bottom left, we have the Allegheny uh, Council Camping Award. We're not sure what SJ stands for on the tent. Uh, and if you look at the bottom below Allegheny Council, you see somebody has penciled in 1956. So we kind of date that to the mid to late fifties. We're not sure of the requirements or if it was a unit award or an individual award. And this felt is probably about the size of a number 10 envelope. It's a uh, bigger than a patch, but not quite large enough to be a patrol flag or something like that. Uh, the neckerchiefs you see on the screen, those are the two major variations of Allegheny Scout Camp neckerchiefs uh, with the logo change. They come in a couple different color varieties, especially of the ones with the uh, front facing chief with the full war bonnet. There's a red version of that one, as well as a tan. The other two that you see uh, with the uh, chief facing towards the left, uh, I've seen a couple different scout camps use that. Uh, Goshen comes to mind, and I've only ever seen those ones in the blue and then the yellow with the brown piped border. 
Uh, all these neckerchiefs are pretty common, pretty easy to pick up. So staff memorabilia, as you can see here, same neckerchiefs. We just threw staff on it. You can see one of the uh, two other color combinations there. Uh, the staff ones, they're a little bit more rare to pick up. I'd say probably the most common version, uh, staff versions are probably the yellow one with the brown border and then the blue one that has the uh, chief facing the left. And uh, you see the camp staff log. You're gonna see these logs pop up a bit through the presentation because I grouped them all together to show the set they go with, but I'm also grouping them into each camp. All right, moving on to Eagle's Nest Reservation. So I was not aware of Eagle's Nest Reservation's existence until uh, probably April of 2020 as during the lockdown, I spent a lot of time digging through old files uh, at the council office, uh, learning as much as I could. And when I discovered that Allegheny uh, Council camping guide from the 60s, it mentioned Eagle's Nest. Well, I'd never heard of it, so I started digging more, and I found a, a whole file on the place. Uh, Eagle's Nest was given by the American Sinamid Co uh, Company on November 16, 1950. That is the day that the deed was signed over to the Allegheny Council uh, with a retainer clause uh, with it. Uh, it consisted of 37 acres. Uh, most of the camp was an extremely steep hill with a small plateau and a heavily wooded area. Uh, there were a few clearings for campsites, uh, but not many. Very small camp. It was located in Collier Township near Bridgeville. If uh, any of you guys have ever been to the Pittsburgh Tradery, that happens in Bridgeville, very close to where this camp was. And if you guys are familiar with that area and are big fans of Top Golf, this camp is catty cornered from the current Top Golf in Bridgeville. Uh, the camp was uh, on the corner of Boyd's Run Road and Thompson Run Road, which you can see I've added an aerial image of what it looks like today. Uh, not much clear area. Uh, so I haven't had a chance to explore this property yet. I'm hoping I'll get a chance to explore it soon uh, because there is something to look for when you're there. In that folder we found, were pictures of the dedication day. So this dedication ceremony happened on June 2nd, 1951. So a year after the council officially owned the property. Uh, and you can see here a couple images of some scouts. Uh, what I'm hoping to find when exploring the property is that concrete base. Uh, I'm sure the flagpole is not there anymore as it's a wood flagpole and that's almost 60 years ago that the camp was there. And I'm sure the plaque is gone too. On the right side of the screen, bottom right, uh, you'll see a picture of four uh, men. Uh, the guy in the scout uniform is Christopher Gunderson. He was the council executive for the Allegheny Council at the time the council acquired uh, Eagle's Nest. Uh, we've heard a couple different things for it. I always find it written down as Eagle's Nest Reservation, but in a lot of correspondence between George Cahill, who was the scout executive in the 60s, uh, he refers to it as all the scouts calling it Eagle's Nest, not Eagle's Nest Reservation, just the Eagle's Nest. Um, from what we can find here, it wasn't used very much, only a few units for short term. We haven't found if there were any camperies or anything like that there. And as far as we know, there were no patches issued for the camp. Uh, a couple more photos we found. We've dated these photos to 1951. Uh, they were in the same binder. They were marked Eagle's Nest photos. And the reason we're dating them the 51 is because there's a license plate on the one truck and it's got a 51 sticker. And I, I feel that's enough evidence to date it to 51. Uh, pretty typical scout setup here. Uh, I kind of find it a little comical. You know, you always hear leaders say back in my day, we always wore the full uniform and there were no excuses uh, if you showed up without it. Well, you can see here, here's some evidence from the 50s where these kids aren't wearing full uniform. You've got jeans, dress slacks. I always think it's a little comical because I hear a lot of my leaders say we used to wear the full uniform and they get hard on kids for wearing a pair of jeans with a scout shirt. So I thought that was a little interesting. All right, Camp Tyanesta, 1954 to 1977. Camp Tyanesta was part of a solution to the Allegheny Council's uh, long-term camping issues. In 1946, uh, the council closed Umstetter Reservation and moved to Hubbard Reservation in the North Hills, uh, which was a very small camp and it had a lot of residential areas popping up around it, was losing some of its wilderness aspect. 
So in 1949, the council announced a plan to build a wilderness camp uh, in the Allegheny National Forest near Lake Tynesta, which was called Camp Tynesta. The first season was 1954, and it had capacity for about 200 to 250 scouts per week. Uh, a few years later, they launched a massive capital campaign, and they were able to up the capacity for camp during the summer to about 400 scouts per week. So on your screen here, you'll see a couple photos we dug up in the council office, a uh, picture of the uh, front gate to Camp Tynesta from the 70s, uh, the ranger's house in the center of the screen with his old Buick there, the health lodge, uh, the main administrative building slash uh, kitchen. Tynesta was not a dining hall camp. They did heater stacks. So there was a massive kitchen where they prep a lot of things and then take it out to the campsites. Uh, and then in the bottom center of the screen, you're going to see uh, what I believe is a picture of one of the OA call-out ceremonies. Uh, pretty neat to see with all the fire they have there in the uh, nice pine forest. It looks real cool. So we'll go on now to what everybody wants to see, the cloth. So Tyanesta had quite a few patches. Uh, what you guys are going to see is by no means what I would consider a full collection of Camp Tyanesta, as I don't know 100% everything they issued, if there were any staff patches. I feel pretty confident that the patches you see on the screen are the patches that were issued for the summer camps. Uh, but I don't know if there's one that I've just missed and we haven't seen pop up. Uh, the first patch is the felt arrowhead you see on the top left there. Uh, you know, basic screen on a felt patch. It's a pretty tough issue to come by. Uh, if you guys ever get a chance to pick it up, I wouldn't, uh, you know, pass it up as it is a little bit uh, more rare for a uh, camp patch from our council. The patch you see next to it is the second. Uh, same design, campfire with Ty and Esta over it. Uh, it is a fully embroidered, or sorry, twill uh, embroidered version of the first patch. I haven't seen or had the chance to examine many of them. So I don't know if there's a left twill, right twill variety, or if there's just the one. Probably the patch you see pop up the most on eBay and around for Camp Tynesta are the three round patches on the uh, right side of the screen. Uh, the first one is the Camp Tynesta where the name of the camp is outlined with black stitching. Uh, the example that I have was done very crudely and most of the ones I've seen don't line up at all. Uh, the second issue is where they removed the black outline from around the camp name. And in the third issue, they've added BSA onto the bottom of the camp patch. Uh, in 1960, they had a summer camp patch uh, with the year dated on it, which is a little bit unusual for the Allegheny Council. Uh, and they only did that at Camp Tyanesta that summer, even though they were operating Semiconon as well. It's got a built-in button loop. It's also a little bit more rare to find. Uh, definitely not a, you know, a real tough issue, but harder to find than the rounds. Uh, the next thing you're going to see again is the Allegheny Scout Camps log set. The first one you see there, uh, with we call it the square log because the edges are a lot more sharp. That one was issued by Allegheny Council up till 1967. The one you see in the middle that's got a lighter color twill and more round edges, we call the round log series. That set was issued by Allegheny Trails Council. They sort of followed the same idea of doing the arrowhead with log segments for their uh, summer camps. And they did that uh, through most of the 60s until they switched over to a round patch that had an arrowhead design on it and had these tiny little black logs with it that had the camp name in yellow. Uh, these log segments on the screen are not to scale compared to the round patches and the arrowheads. They are to scale with each other. So you can see how tiny that little black tie and nest log is. Uh, I have probably picked it up three or four different times because I keep losing it. So it's, it's in a best hobbies page now and it's secured in the binder. On the right side of the screen are the tie and nest uh, segments from 1976. Uh, in 1976, 75 timeframe, the council did a series for the bicentennial was a set called Be a Bell Ringer. And there were several different segments for it for different programs like Day Camp, uh, our American Heritage Camperies, and a segment for each camp we were operating at the time. At one point, they ran out of some of the segments. So they had to reorder, which is where the one on the bottom of the screen comes from. 
those segments are in scale with each other. So you can see that it's a little bit larger. And when you actually have the patches in your hand uh, with the center of it, they do not fit around a three inch round. Uh, and that mistake exists for every single segment in the set that they had to reorder. Uh, Camp Tynesta has a couple neckerchiefs. Uh, summer of 1958, instead of a camp patch, they handed out a neckerchief, which you can see is that green one on the left side of the screen uh, with a silk screen on it. And then most of your screen is covered right now with the Allegheny Scout Camp's map neckerchief. Uh, there are two in the series, one for Camp Tynesta and one for Camp Semikanon. Uh, beautiful image of the camp uh, map with a lot of color. Normally when I see these, they're single color screens. Uh, you see them around. I think a lot of older camps have them. Uh, our council at the time, Allegheny, only had one for Tyanesta and Semikanon, uh, but it is a beautiful piece. And if you guys ever get the chance to pick one up, I recommend it. Uh, you know, looks great hanging above the fireplace. <laughs> So Camp Tyanesta's big draw to their camp was the boot and paddle program. The boot and paddle program was a canoe trick down the Allegheny River that was 150 some miles long. Uh, the program was two weeks long. So the first week, scouts would participate in a resident camp at summer at Tynesta, where they would practice a lot of the canoeing skills, you know, swim test, other instructional stuff about uh, what to do on a high adventure trip such as canoeing. Uh, you can see on the top left that there was a decal uh, they would give out to each one participant of the boot and paddle, and that was their logo. It had uh, some of the rivers in Pennsylvania highlighted, and then on the left side of it, you can see the little checkered pattern going down the one river. Uh, there are two tents on it. The top tent is Camp Tynesta, and the bottom tent is Camp Guy Suda. So for the second week of their camp, they would canoe down the Allegheny River from Tynesta to Guy Suda. Uh, you know, there were a few portages along the way, especially with some of the locks and dams that you'd encounter closer to the city. Uh, and they'd camp on several smaller islands through the Allegheny. It was an extremely popular program uh, that the council offered for almost 20 years. Uh, and even after Camp Tynesta closed, they still continued doing it out of Camp Guy Suda. They would just drive all the scouts up to Tynesta and put them in the uh, water up there. You can see under the decal, there is a segment for the boot and paddle. It's got a very crude image of the decal as well as a BP, the initials for boot and paddle. That goes with the 1975-76 Be a Bell Ringer set. For all scouts that completed the boot and paddle, there was a neckerchief slide uh, that was of the same design as the decal, just with the addition of a ward on it. And those were given to each scout at the end of the boot and paddle trek at Camp Guy Suda. They would have a big campfire and picnic. Everybody's family would be there and they'd hand out that award. Uh, on the right side of the screen, we have a nice image of uh, some of the scouts getting ready to set off on the boot and paddle. You can see all of our canoes there have that Allegheny Scout Camps logo uh, on the back of the canoe and the front of the canoe. Uh, that's a staple for our camps to add the camp logo to all of our canoes. Probably the most prized possession you can get when collecting boot and paddle stuff would be one of the boot and paddle paddles. Uh, for an additional small fee on top of their summer camp fees, scouts could keep the paddle they used during their trek. Uh, you see here, I have an example of one paddle front and back. Every paddle came with a decal on it that was of the boot and paddle trek. So every town that's highlighted, every spot where they stopped and set up camp for the night is highlighted. And that's a map of a 150 mile portion of the Allegheny River. Uh, a lot of scouts like to add other things to their paddles. So you see on this one, it's quite decked out. This scout not only you know, earned the boot and paddle award, but he got the 50 miler award for the scouts, the historic trails award. He attended the 1970 uh, Nippon Jamboree, the 73 Jamboree, the 69 Jamboree. He's been to Philmont Schiff, a conservation training camp at Schiff, and also has the best football team of all times logo on it, the Pittsburgh Steelers, as well as a Seabees sticker. So these paddles, they don't pop up all that often. Uh, everybody that I've ever talked to that has done the boot and paddle holds on to their paddle dearly, and they always tell me, good luck getting it off of me. And I say to myself, like, oh, I never went on the trek, so I don't really want to paddle. And one of them just fell into my lap one day. So, but it's definitely a really cool, unique item that I'd say is a must have part of 
you can't tie nest a collection. So there are a few troop items from Tai Nesta that local units made. In uh, 1968, Troop 58 made their own neckerchief that has the boot and paddle logo on it. Uh, I've seen two of these. I'm sure there's a very small number as it was a local troop made item. Uh, the two that I know exist, one is in my collection and I donated the other one to a display at the council. And that's the one you see on the screen here. Uh, a few years ago, I saw Troop 60 Boot and Paddle 1973 patch pop up on eBay. I've seen a few of them pop up since, and I don't know what the difference between the black border and the yellow border is. Uh, nobody can really tell me. All we know is that a local troop made it. Uh, and then as 1973, Troop 306 also made a summer camp patch for Tyanesta. No explanation as to why the troop made their own patch for summer camp. Uh, some units like to do that, I guess. But I usually see that in our council pop up for Tyanesta. A lot of troops would make their own patch. Uh, so if anybody has any information on Troop 60 and why they made the boot and paddle patch, I'd love to get some more information on that. So there's a few camp staff items for Tyanesta. Uh, on the bottom left is the 1956 Camp Tyanesta staff neckerchief with the same campfire from the felt camp patch. It's the earliest Camp Tynesta staff neckerchief I can find. I don't know if there one, one exists for 54 and 55, uh, but 56 is the earliest I've seen. Uh, on the top of the screen in the center, you see a white Tynesta neckerchief. It says Camp Tynesta has the same uh, Native American sheaf from the round patch. Uh, not sure what year that came from, other than that it was sometime in the 60s. On the next neckerchief you're going to see is a green and white plaid neckerchief. This neckerchief is a staff neckerchief that was made by the staff. They sewed the camp patch on it and we've dated it to the early 60s. We're not sure of the exact year. It was given to me by a guy who worked at Tynesta. He just said he couldn't remember what year that was their staff neckerchief. On the right side of the screen, you see a yellow Camp Tynesta staff neckerchief. Uh, same basic design as the Allegheny Scout Camp's neckerchief from that year. Uh, we're not sure if this one was used several years or if there's other, other comb color combinations that exist that say Camp Tynesta and staff wore it. I do know, however, that there is a version of that yellow neckerchief that says Camp Tynesta, but does not say staff. All right, the ranch. The ranch goes along with Tynesta. Uh, it was originally opened in 1956, a little bit northeast of Tynesta. Uh, and it was supposed to be their outpost camp. Uh, they called it for the first year the Tyanesta Outpost, and then in 1957 changed the name to the ranch. Uh, it operated as an explorer base for the council, doing mainly a horseback trek through the Allegheny National Forest, as well as uh, you know packing your uh, bags and stuff onto some small uh, donkeys. You can see there the uh, the ranch log that goes with the Allegheny set as well as an Allegheny Council survival trek uh, patch. Uh, I've always been told that the, this particular patch came from the ranch and the event happened at the ranch. Uh, is it a part of the official ranch collection? I'd say no, as it's an event patch and it doesn't really mention the camp name, but it's still a neat thing to look at. And uh, any camp patch or uh, campery patch from before the 60s is, is a nice patch to get. So I like that one and I always keep it with that collection. On the right side of the screen there uh, is one of the only photos I can find of the ranch. Uh, very blurry. Uh, it was in the council office in an old folder that just said the ranch and it had a little uh, staple to a piece of paper was that picture and one of the ranch segments. So that's the only picture I can find. Love to find more a little bit later. But for a little outpost explorer camp that was only open three years, I think this is a, a nice little bit of information for it. Hillman Reservation. Okay, Hillman Reservation was the Allegheny's council's dream to build a Philmont of the East. I'm sure a lot of councils out in the eastern side of the United States had a camp that they would call the Philmont of the East, uh, but the Hillman Reservation was definitely a, a very beautiful camp. So in 1955, uh, Hillman Reservation was donated to the council by the Hillman family of Pittsburgh. Uh, the property held promise of a wilderness reservation in the east that would rival Philmont Scout Ranch in New Mexico, 
The wild, rugged country in West Virginia was located very close to Lake Lynn, which is now known as Cheat Lake. Uh, it was donated by John H. Hillman in 55, uh, the original portion, and it was 1,465 acres of land on the south side of the lake. Uh, Henry Hillman, who was John H. Hillman's son, donated another 216 acres of land that they planned on uh, developing uh, into another explorer base. So you can see here on the, uh, most of the screen is covered by this Hillman Reservation page that comes out of the Allegheny uh, Camping Guide. Uh, location Lake Lynn, Tyrone, West Virginia, 1,465 acres. Explorers and troops, overnight and short-term camping, as well as canoe trips. Its facilities include tenting areas along Cheat River, uh, and it lists some of the campsites there. Its program features are swimming, boating, canoeing, fishing, hiking trails, and scout craft opportunities. Uh, was available any time of year, and you had to get a permit from the scout office to camp there. On the right side of the screen is a map that the council used to publish of how to get to Hillman Reservation. So it was a small portion of a road map through West Virginia. And you can see the Hillman Reservation's location, uh, especially being right next to Cooper's Rock State Forest. Uh, and how to get into the camp. The one thing I think is funny about this map is the council was trying to develop this uh, at one point into their long-term summer camp uh, after Tyanesta closed in 1977. And uh, the camp they ended up choosing as uh, their long-term camp uh, was one they just built brand new called Heritage Reservation. And I think it's funny that uh, there's a Sunoco station right outside Heritage Reservation, as well as one outside of uh, Hillman Reservation. I know our staff always like to go there and uh, get a little bit of cell phone service and all that after a hard week's work. Uh, but I thought that was funny when I saw this map, some similarities between the properties. So Hillman Reservation did have a logo, uh, sort of an unofficial, very detailed logo. You can see on the left side of the screen. Uh, it was drawn by Milton Kniff, who did a ton of Bicentennial and Americana uh, cartoons throughout the 70s. A uh, pretty famous artist out of Ohio. Uh, there's an explanation of the logo we found in the office here. It says, uh, the view, one of the country's magnificent sites, the Cheat River Cannon. The man, a personification of yesteryear's artificer. Uh, and the land, the program simulates self-reliance, courage, ruggedness of the mind, body, purity of character, tenderness of spirit, respect for nature, and love of freedom. So quite the explanation for a detailed camp logo. I've never seen a patch or anything that has that logo on it. Uh, just a drawing we have in the council office that hangs in uh, the Kniff Gallery where we have a lot of his artwork. On the right side of the screen is a really awesome photo. We have one that's probably five feet by eight feet in our council office. Uh, this is a cheat view at Cooper's Rock State Park, which was a really popular spot for all the scouts to go to at Hillman Reservation. But the coolest thing about this photo is if you look very closely at the one scout where you can see his troop numbers on the right side of the picture, it looks like there's uh, ribbons hanging from his shoulder. Now, at first when I saw this, I thought those are patrol ribbons. Then I was like, no, if this was taken in the early 50s, mid 50s, that's too late for patrol ribbons. However, it's not too late for Rover Scouts uh, ribbons. So it's a nice picture of Rover Scouts. Uh, we're still trying to find some documentation on more of them in Pittsburgh. Uh, but it's pretty neat that the, uh, they're in that photo. And honestly, this scan of the photo in the presentation doesn't do it justice. So if anybody's ever in the Pittsburgh area and stops by Flag Plaza Scout Center, I'll gladly show you this photo. So Hillman Reservation, tons of high adventure. Uh, you can see here, these are all photos that the Allegheny Council would use for promotion of Hillman Reservation. That's why some of the photos looked very staged and everybody has that Allegheny Scout Camp shirt on. Uh, there was, a, I mean, the huge dream for Hillman Reservation to be the film on of the East. I mean, you can see the rock climbing, the caving. We have another photo on the bottom right, which is of cheat view from a slightly different angle. However, this photo was taken in the early 60s. Uh, the scouts that are in it uh, are wearing neckerchiefs from Troop 228 in Bethel Park, which is still a troop to this day. Uh, the river you see here is just outside Hillman Reservation. That would be the Cheat River. So some really neat photos. So at one point, 
Hillman Reservation, when they were developing it into an explorer base, they had a vision for an aquatics camp there. So this plan that you see on the screen, uh, we found in the council office, and it's from the BSA uh, properties divi property division. And I'm sure a lot of councils and camps have this where national would come in and they would do an assessment of the property and they would look at how you can develop it into a bigger camp or something different for high adventure. So you can see here a more zoomed in version of some of the facilities and where they were gonna put campsites as well as where the aquatic space was gonna be. None of these facilities were ever built. The aquatic space never really happened. Uh, and the sad part about swimming and everything was highly dependent on how the river was, uh, which a lot of the time it was okay for boating, but it was not okay to swim in. Uh, but this is from May 1959, uh, really cool piece of history for Hillman. Uh, and I've never seen one like this where they've colored it in and all that and added trees. I've seen just, you know, typical blueprints and everything. So neat piece of Hillman history. All right, now we're talking cloth, everybody's favorite. So Hillman Reservation had two official patches. There was the W Virginia log that went with the segment set, as well as this uh, CSP, this Hillman Reservation Gilwell. Uh, this actually predates Allegheny uh, Trails Council's first shoulder patch or first CSP, uh, and it was used for mainly wood badge courses. Uh, the one I'm talking about is on the left side of the screen. It's the black border version. There are two different variations of it. Uh, we call it the round G, which you see on the full CSP, as well as the square G, which you see on the segment of the one on the right side of the screen. The white border version, I talked a bit more about that in detail in uh, the Pittsburgh Council history presentation on their shoulder patches. Uh, we're not sure if it was a prototype or anything, but it doesn't pop up a lot. Definitely very rare. And if you guys get a chance to pick it up, please do. It's also on my needs list. Uh, but we're not sure if it's a prototype or what it was issued for. And we've never seen it in any photos or anything. We do know, however, that the Black Hillman Reservation border patch was used quite frequently. Uh, the bottom picture on the left, you see uh, the guy on the left side. We don't know who that is. In the center, it's a gentleman by the name of Carson Buck, who was the course director for Wood Badge that year. And on the right side of the picture is Green Bar Bill at Hillman Reservation. And I think it's really cool to see a picture of Green Bar Bill and he's wearing that Hillman Reservation shoulder strip on his uniform. So the center of the screen, uh, you see a picture. This is of the Wood Badge course at Hillman Reservation. Most of the photos we have of this course are black and white. I just thought the picture that had Green Bar Bill was so good, I had to get it colorized and definitely worth it. On the right side of the screen, I mentioned a little bit earlier about this segment that says Gilwell. When Hillman Reservation closed in 1983, uh, they were conducting wood badge courses at other camps. Uh, and I'm not sure the guy's name, but whoever was in charge of wood badge for the council at the time thought of a neat idea. And it was, let me take all these leftover Hillman uh, shoulder strips and cut Gilwell off and everybody can sew it on their red jack shirt. Well, uh, a collector that uh, a lot of people know by the name of Steve DeWick found out about that and said, no, 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 don't do that. However many Hillman patches you have left, I will buy that many Gilwell strips and trade you the Gilwell strip for the Hillman CSP. So our council then started the tradition of uh, making a Gilwell strip every year for Wood Badge. Uh, but the one you see on the screen here was cut off of the Hillman uh, reservation shoulder strip. All right, moving on to Camp Semiconon. So Camp Semiconon was opened in 1956 to 1980. Uh, in 1955, it was becoming more and more evident that uh, Hubbard Reservation in the North Hills of Pennsylvania had too much residential area around it. And so the council acquired some property in Butler County near the town of Conoquinessing, and they sold off Hubbard Reservation to uh, Pittsburgh University. So Hubbard, they started calling Camp Semiconon New Hubbard Reservation. So on the top left of the screen, you see a uh, picture of a sign here that was outside of the camp, it said Hubbard Reservation, Allegheny Council. Hubbard Reservation consisted of two camps, Camp Semiconon and Camp Littlecon, both named after the streams that ran through the camps. 
They originally had massive plans to develop both of them into long-term camping uh, for summer camp and year-round camping. Uh, they only ended up doing that to Semikanon. You can see here, I've attached a map of Camp Semikanon from 1978, which was the second to last year it was in operation for its resident camp. Uh, pretty typical uh, summer camp. You, know, you got your activities field, your health lodge, campfire circle, and a whole bunch of campsites named after trees, which I see that a lot at a bunch of camps. Uh, camp Semikanon had uh, pretty good attendance at summer camp. They had room for about 250 scouts a week, and it was packed almost every summer uh, until the mid-70s. Attendance started going down a bit. So Camp Semikanon's got a couple patches. Uh, we see here there are three round patches on the top left of the screen. I'm not sure which one of them came out first uh, out of the two red and white rounds. If it was the one where the uh, very blurry image or very distorted image of somebody riding a horse or the one that's almost a very clear image of a Native American uh, chief riding a horse. I don't know which one came out first, uh, but they're both the first and second issue, just up for debate which order. The round patch that says Camp Semikanon Firemaker was their honor camper patch. Uh, pretty easy to, to come by. Not sure of the requirements or anything for it. Everybody I talked to said they really can't remember. And of course, we're back to the segments again. Uh, you can see here the square log version, the round log version, and the small black log version, as well as the two red, white, and blue segments from the Bicentennial series. On the right side of the screen, uh, we have a council patch that says NEV56 Semicon. Uh, it is a really tough to get Allegheny Trail CSP. Uh, it's from the early 70s when any uh, V56 wood badge course was held. And it's the only CSP in our council's history before the 80s that actually mentions a camp name. So it's, it's pretty neat. Uh, definitely a must have for both your Allegheny Trails council patch collection and your Camp Semikanon collection. Uh, below that, we have the Allegheny Trails Council uh, Camp Busy Bee Corps. So the uh, Busy Bee with the C was a, a group of guys who were really dedicated to helping uh, with Camp Time uh, Semikanon uh, with their ranger, helping out from anything from conservation projects to projects to help upkeep camp. Uh, I'm not sure if there were any set requirements on earning one or if it was just a patch for the group. Uh, and it's a neat little patch and not one that you would recognize as a camp patch as it has nothing to identify really what it is other than the council name. Uh, and that's from the early 70s. So Camp Semikanon also had their fair share of trading post items. Uh, we have a lovely Camp Semikanon uh, map neckerchief. Uh, apologize for the blurry image. I couldn't locate where mine was to be able to scan it for everybody. Uh, on the right side of the screen, you see yet again another generic Allegheny Scout Camp's neckerchief. But this one has Camp Semikanon on it. And I have this one somewhere. And this is why I think that there's a Ty Nesta version of it without staff as well, because I found the Semikanon version. Uh, I think that's more than enough evidence to say there's one at Ty Nesta, because typically if they made a Scout Camps patch for Semikanon, they made it for Ty Nesta and vice versa. On the bottom of the screen is a pennant that they used to sell in the trading post, uh, Camp Semikanon, Land of Whispering Trees. That was sort of the little camp catchphrase. Uh, there is an identical camp banner, which you guys saw in part two for Camp Anawana. These came out after 1977. Uh, so there only exists one for Semikanon and one for Anawana, as well as one for the council's day camp in the series. So there's a few Camp Tyne uh, Semikanon staff items. Uh, this is definitely by no means a full collection of their staff items. Uh, there seems to be a lot less staff items for Tyanesta and Semikanon than there did uh, Camp Anawana. Anawana ran as its own summer camp and as the council's only camp for a long time, whereas Semikanon and Tyanesta ran together for the Allegheny Council. So a lot of their staff issues are those generic Allegheny Scout Camp stuff, but these are just three of the ones that I've found that mention specifically Semikanon. Uh, the generic one you see here from the early 60s, one from 1969, and then one from Allegheny Trails Council from 1977 uh, during their years of choosing a prominent Native American figure 
as the theme for summer camp each year. 77's theme was Hawaii. So Camp Semikanon uh, had something very interesting occur at it. And I'm still looking for more information. So this is sort of a call for help for anybody that knows anything about it or can help me find anything about it. Uh, I received a collection from Semikanon's Ranger uh, at one point. I had an opportunity to purchase it and I did. And in that collection came this certificate that said Robert Lawfer uh, is certified as a participating member in the first Can-Am Scout Troop at Camp Semikanon, Pennsylvania, uh, USA. It's dated for August 22nd, 1969. I can't really make out the signatures on it, uh, but it's a joint Canadian Scouts and US Scouts troop. So a really interesting item. I wish I could find out more information as to what led to the forming of the troop, if it was a group of Canadian scouts that came down to Semikanon, which is kind of what I'm leaning to. Uh, and definitely if there's other members of the troop or any cloth issued for it, I'd love to find out more information. If anybody has some, please contact me. Uh, on the right side of the screen is a nice neckerchief I picked up at the Pittsburgh Traderie this year. A uh, local troop issue from 609 Overbrook, PA, uh, mentions Camp Semikanon in 1972. Uh, Beautiful piece, really heavy cloth, uh, great neckerchief, only one I've ever seen like it. Uh, I'd be curious to find out if there's more, but as of right now, it's a local troop issue for summer camp that year. So I mentioned a little bit earlier camps Little Con and Semikanon being part of the new Hubbard Reservation. So Camp Little Con was a tiny little portion of property they had uh, adjacent to Camp Semikanon. And the big thing they would do between the two camps during the summer was called the shoe and canoe program. Uh, I talked a lot earlier about the boot and paddle program from Camp Tynesta. Those two programs are kind of linked. So the shoe and canoe was the uh, younger scout version that was sort of a first step into introducing scouts to the boot and paddle. Uh, the shoe and canoe was a basic trek. One night they would canoe from Semikanon down the Little Conoconesson uh, Creek to Camps Little Con, which you can see a little map here I have highlighted of a portion of Se uh, Little Con. It has the Ranger's House from Semikanon, as well as a tiny little Boyce Lodge, which I've been told is like a storage shed or just a little overnight thing for equipment uh, that was used by the staff. Uh, the Shoe and Canoe had two segments uh, for the 1975-76 Bicentennial set, as well as a bolo tie. There is also a neckerchief slide that looks exactly like the bolo tie you see on the left side of the screen, just without the bolo portion. Uh, semi Little Con was used for, besides the shoe and canoe, a lot of uh, short-term events, camperees, and council conservation training camps. You see here the image of the conservation training camp patch from Allegheny Trails Council. That patch was used at several different camps uh, wherever they do the conservation training camp. You also saw that patch in part uh, two under Camp Anawana. So Camp's Little Con, like I said, part of the New Hubbard Reservation, it covered about 365 acres of the total property that was New Hubbard Reservation. It had one cabin, one latrine, and a bunch of primitive campsites, perfect for camperees and scout craft events. Uh, other than that, it wasn't used for much. Uh, the only patch I can find that actually mentions anything about Camp Little Con on it would be this Alum Rock Spring Camporee 1966. This patch was de designed by a scout master from Beaver Valley uh, District, which is part of the current Laurel Highlands Council. Uh, his name is Jeff Jones. He designed it when he was a scout in 1966. So Camp Tynesta, Camp Semikanon, Camp Anawana from part two, and Camp Little Con, as well as Hillman Reservation, are all part of the same story of camping in the Allegheny Council. All of those camps led to the ultimate uh, dream of a new scout camp, which was Heritage Reservation. In 1977, the Allegheny Trails Council could not get a lease longer than 10 years from the Army Corps of Engineers who owned the property that was on, Tyanesta was on. Uh, so in 1977, Tyanesta closed and they started construction on Heritage Reservation in Farmington, PA. 
So camps Semikanon, Little Con, and Anawana operated their resident programs for three more years until 1980, when Semikanon and Little Con were sold and Anawana's camp was shut down and it was used for short-term camping only. Hillman Reservation was also shut down. Uh, a lot of the reasons for these camps closing was the council came up with a strategic plan committee for the camping program and they've made a lot of rules, one of which was the camp needs to be within a 60 mile distance of the center of the council, which they defined the center of the council as Flag Plaza Scout Center in Pittsburgh. Not really center when it comes to real geography, but when it comes to camp planning committee logic, I guess it was centered. Uh, so those camps were all closed and sold, minus Anawana, which led to Heritage Reservation in 1980. So thank you for watching. Just a shout out to Brett McMunn, uh, Steve DeWick, Brian Gatto, Jeff Jones, and Neil Bronder, who all helped find information on this presentation, as well as provided uh, pictures and patches and stuff for it. Yes, I have something. Um, the picture of Bill Hillcourt and on the left side, Carson Buck. Carson Buck was a very good friend of Hillcourt's. And after the Boy Scouts of America moved to Texas during the 80s, uh, Hill Court was invited by Carson to move in with him. And Carson was a professional architect and he taught and he gave him the whole bottom floor. Uh, I, I would go up there and stay with Hill Court for days at a time. It had a great view of the valley. There was an old um, quarry, which became a, a fireplace where you could have fire, you know, campfires. And the guy in the middle was a general who took on the position of uh, director of scouting. That was the guy in the middle. I don't know his name. And he was a collector of postage stamps. He had a very nice collection of scouting postage stamps. He was a fine gentleman. And uh, so those are the three people. And of course, uh, Hillcourt died in about 1992. He took a trip around the world to do book signings on his books. And he was in Sweden. And morning came and Carson knocked at his door. No one came to the door. They opened the door. Hillcourt had passed away watching TV in a lounge chair. So while he's watching TV, he dozed off and he didn't awaken. And that was the uh, end of Bill Hillcourt and Carson Buck was there. They were very good friends. All right, that's all I have to say. Adam, it's Dave Frederick up in Canada. Uh, the Can Am. Uh, certificate you have uh, from Pennsylvania? Is that uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania area? Allegheny, Pitt Pennsylvania? Pittsburgh area. Pittsburgh. The reason I'm asking is uh, Philly, Philadelphia, they, they've had a camp with Canada since 1967. It's called SCOPE. It stands for Scouting Centennial. Uh, hold on. Um, uh, Scout Centenary Ontario Pennsylvania Expedition. It's been running since six, 1967. They would have been using all types of camps in around Pennsylvania for the events back and forth. Uh, we've been running the camps, stopped in about 2019 because of COVID, but it's uh, been running ever since. So might be having something to do with that. 